Um, but yeah, I was gonna say because obviously you're doing you're doing more bits now, and that's cool. Um, but also another inactive pillar, uh, George, who's he is some, back. Some might say is more inactive. Is now yeah he's back. Wayne, and he's been are streaming you joking? Like... I've never stopped doing podcasts for the last six years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. Way more active. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, he's back now though, doing doing his streams and everything. His road to the PS5 and God, that is a hell of an undertaking. I was like, there's no way he's gonna do it. Like he streams once a fucking month and sometimes yeah. just doesn't even start the stream and will not show up. There's no way he's gonna do it. Um, <laughs> but he's been doing it and it's fucking crazy. He's been streaming like every day. Like managing to like speed through some games really fucking quick, um, and he's just yeah they've been really fun as well and they've been doing some good numbers as well with uh, like he had almost two hundred people on those uncharted streams so holy um, shit pretty crazy stuff um, so it's That's nice amazing. the pillars are all doing bits and pieces it's good to see us doing doing stuff again and obviously we'll come together and talk about fucking Assassin's Creed at some point um, yeah, as we bro. do yeah which well, is gonna mate, be it's it's good. got it's got the the origins pre-origins feel again all of a sudden it's come out of nowhere yeah. from negativity and rage to this like pre-origins feel <clears throat> where yeah, there's like that nice. little bit of hope there's a little yeah, bit of, and, like... hey, it's fleeting and you know in six months it'll be gone but let's enjoy it while it lasts yeah. you know what i mean it's just this nice feeling and it's almost like i don't know origins felt like exciting but in like a different way this almost feels like in a f- more familiar way and i kind of like that it might be because we've got like people like jesper kid back and darby's working on it and so there's this familiarity there whereas origins was like and also it's playing into a lot of like assassin's creed's history and stuff where it's like you know it's we're gonna have assassins included we've got social stuff coming back um the fucking shing sound is back from the uh, shing Creed. Sound. yeah yeah the shing sound that got me fucking hard um and yeah there's all those things and i feel like there's that familiarity there and it's like it feels almost like assassin's creed um and it's that's nice it's a nice feeling and obviously they've still got time like the game's gone gold but they've still got time before launch to make that day one patch and add in a bunch of different stuff to fix loads of different bugs hopefully that fucking the cape physics they sort that out because the cloak yeah, looks, to, um it, horrendous yeah. but yeah um, that was the worst part i reckon that yeah, part. that's the okay. worst part is that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> on top of that, like, combat still looks fucking messy as shit, but I think that's just down to the base system they're using for this game. It's the same it's as Odyssey, better. It same as Origins. Better. A little bit better, but uh, overall, it's just still just, like, looks like a fucking clusterfuck. Um, and that's just the nature of the system they're using. Apparently, it feels better than it looks, and when you're, pla- when you're actually playing it, you don't notice it because it feels right. And hopefully that's the case. If that's the case, I don't really give a shit too much because when you're playing it, it'll feel right and you won't notice it looking weird. But when you're not playing it and you're looking at it, you're like, that looks like a mess. So, and that's the case with some games. Like, I have felt that before with some games. So, I um, liked Origins Combat. You know. So, I'm, I feel like confused of how they went backwards with Odyssey. And even mm. with this, it doesn't look as good as Origins did with it. Yeah. Origins looked, a, there was something about Origins that felt more grounded, more weighty. Whereas this game, it feels like you're seeing like fire just come out of the ground and like, your characters zipping about and like you're shooting them with fucking fire and poison arrows all the time and And they're using odyssey abilities and shit and i hate that shit i fucking hate that that shit yeah way too over the top and ridiculous um and that's you know not really for me like i've said that on on my stream i said that that sure they've toned the abilities down but they're still a bit too ridiculous for my liking and they look kind they look silly and like i'd much prefer a grounded system but whatever uh, and I'm sure I can just avoid using the abilities that I don't like. Um, so that's yeah. that's fine. But I'd rather they weren't there at all. Like, I'm, I have my theories of what it is. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, of, I, almost what I hope that it is. It's like a uh, Ghost of Tsushima, like, Jin story, where it's like the you're a, a samurai, but you're going through that conflict of becoming a ghost and what works for you. And I feel like, you know, you're mm-hmm. a Viking, but you're going through that conflict of you're realizing these, these, you want to, you know, there's a noble like art to what the hidden ones slash assassins represent and what they're doing. And you kind of learn more about their work and what the order of the ancients are up to. And you realize that's a greater threat than fucking raiding villages. So you're more drawn to that. And that brings conflict with mm-hmm. Sigurd and, and your um, clan and everything. And that, you end up going the assassin direction and not the viking direction like that's what i want to see yeah and the derby said as well like the beginning of this game like it begins with the seer in your settlement in your village where you are in norway gives uh, eivor like a prophecy that he will betray his brother so at some point 
Eivor will betray Sigurd, and obviously Eivor's like, well, I'm not going to do that. He's my brother. Like, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but then that's yeah. weighing on him for the whole game. And as the game progresses, like Darby said, there's a darkness. There's a darker side to Sigurd, like the choices he makes and the things that he does, and that's going to drive a wedge between the two of you. And I think that could uh, send Eivor towards the assassins. We don't know whether uh, Sigurd is at, like with the Order of the Ancients or not, or what's going on there, but... Um, be interesting to see exactly what the what causes them to to separate and drive them apart uh you know you could see that difference in in viewpoint between the assassins and templars be represented through avor and his brother um which would be an interesting way of doing it showing that sort of that disagreement driving them in different directions um but yeah there's a lot there's a lot going on and like darby said as well with regards to the order of ancients he he said like he worked a bit on origins obviously as we know um and he said that when he was coming up with the idea for these proto templars he wanted them to be there be, to be a significant difference between the templars that we know and the order of ancients because he felt like differentiating them made sense and there should be a difference there and he said he never got to do it with origins um and so he's doing it in this game so you'll notice the order of ancients have significant differences from the templars um not on a surface level but if you dig a little bit deeper as you're playing you'll notice the differences between the two groups even though they are the same there's so much you can do with like the setting that you're in going to north america is a conscious choice they're um, going crazy with like how many places are in this game it's insane like we've got obviously england norway now we've got north america um it's wild you and know we're going to the middle east you know we're going to the middle east i think, you know I think we've got to because i you don't just make a viking game and say oh let's just add in north america there's a conscious narrative reason we're going to go to north america why else would you go there that makes no sense and in terms of yeah. assassin's creed the grand temple's there that makes a lot of sense but also we've got a major temple location in norway as well that we see from the map in assassin's creed uh, 2 You've got these, like, obviously these minor Peace of Eden locations, these minor temples, whether it's, like, a seismic temple from Rogue, or you've got, like, a, a shroud fucking temple where they're just keeping the shroud of the Sword of Eden or an apple or something. But then you've got these major, major temples that are that are marked on the Codex map that Altair had, where you've got um, the, uh, the one in Italy and Rome, uh, but then you've also got, like, the one in Norway, and then you've got the Grand Temple in North America. So how are these going to play into the story? Is that relevant at all? Um potentially but i can't think of any other reason they would just choose to go to north america unless it had narrative narrative significance to the story and that could obviously yeah tie into the grand temple like what you can't go to north america and not not have something to do with the grand temple but what yeah. we don't really know What's it's gonna be to us? interesting to, to see us? what they're doing and as well like i've noticed something that's really cool um that they've talked about with regards to the modern day and darby said this in his interview with uh, jv is that his name um where he talks about uh the modern day and the way it's being handled and these like rift things so he said like um the rifts no matter what order you do them in it's like a chronological story so if you find like the third one first or the second one first it's going to be the same dialogue you're hearing so it's always going to be in the right order so you're t it's telling a story as you go through these different rifts um, and they're almost made like uh, the Brotherhood truth sequence, so where you're sort of in the guts of the Animus, um, or that renders itself on top of the world, and so you're like going through this Animus weirdness stuff, like parkour puzzles and stuff, uh, mm. with dialogue obviously from like Sean and Rebecca uh, and Layla, um, and every time you reach the end, like you're trying to get this data packet. Um, and when you reach the end and you get this data back, each one is a big, like, info drop of, like, things um, and mm. stuff that's going on. Um, and Darby's words were something like, once once people get all of these, I think they're going to be picking their eyes up off the ground. So he's doing stuff that obviously he's really excited about. Um, and I think that's yeah, I what's know, important oh, here. I, I know this motherfucker's excited. I know he's, he's very excited. He's just fucking excited. He's teasing. <laughs> he's teasing. He really is. He's loving it. He's loving every minute of it. He feels um, the sizzle. He feels <laughs> it. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be exciting. Um, and like we've said before, like the modern day story as it is, I don't care necessarily about its overarching sort of direction because we always know that it's not going to it's not going to hold up from game to game the way that it used to in, in its in its infancy. So... It's not like I'm thinking, oh, where is this game going to go and how are they going to... What, where's, where's, how's it going to lead to the next game? Um, you're, it's almost like a different mindset to the way it is. Like when I was playing 
through Brotherhood, just off on a tangent here, um, and you go into the Da Vinci Disappearance, um, I had to like re sort of adjust how I was thinking about this game because I forgot that everything that's said here is so important. Uh, like when you get so if you do the Da Vinci Disappearance before you finish the game, you get an email from William Miles that talks about how there's important information here. We've got to try and find it. Don't tell the others about it because we need the information. And then like you go through it all and you get to the end and like you get the the coordinates and the coordinates lead to the Grand Temple that don't come up until you know two games later where they're going to North America to reach the Grand Temple. And the, you know you know then the reason William knew about that is because he got the information from the Da Vinci Disappearance. And it's like just that is so cool the way that those things link together like from they had the foresight to have something show up in a dlc in brotherhood that wouldn't link that would then link to assassin's creed 3 after revelations um and that stuff's really cool and like obviously you don't get that anymore but i think that darby being darby there's a lot that he can do to tie the story into previous storylines and actually make it compelling in a way that might make me be like yeah you know i care about this final story for for layla or final story for this uh, ancient mythology trilogy, I guess.